Today, we're gonna answer a question as old as, well, plugins really. Can you use them in a live scenario? Spoiler, yes, you can. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Taylor and today I wanna to show you guys how to use Amp Sims live. This is my MacBook Pro, doesn't need to be a MacBook Pro, can be any laptop that runs your Amp Sims. I have this Donner interface plugged into it. Now you might be able to do this with your computer's built-in audio, but the reason I am using an audio interface is because I can mute the direct input going into the audio interface so we're not sending the sound of the direct guitar plus the amp sim into the speaker cabinet, which by the way, the output out of the Donner audio interface is going directly into the Seymour Duncan Power Stage 700 down here. That is powering my Mesa 4x12 cabinet, being mic'd up with an SM57, going into an Apollo Twin Duo over there and recording it. And that's the sound you guys are hearing in your ear holes right now. I have the STL Amp Hub plugin loaded up here, and I chose this plugin just uh, for aesthetics. Doesn't need to be this amp sim, you can use any amp sim, you can use a free amp sim if you want, but I like this one. I think it has some unique amplifiers and I just really like the look of it, you know? Very superficial. This is what it sounds like when you load it up though. We're gonna switch this out and test a few different amplifiers, but first of all, I wanna go over the setup here. So I'm plugged in to the Donner interface here, and this Donner interface has a button here that lets you turn on or off direct monitoring. So if I turned on direct monitoring, you can hear my guitar's direct signal coming through to the speaker cabinet. We don't want that. That is why I was talking about using an interface here. We're gonna turn that guy off, so that way you're just getting the Ampsum sound coming through the cabinet. All right, let's go over here to the computer and go over some settings real quick. The first things we're gonna do in the audio settings here is set up our audio device. So I have the Donner Live Jack, USB selected for both input and output. I'm using this in mono, so I'm only using the left input and the left output. And I have my sample rate set to 48 kilohertz. Now this is something you're going to want to pay attention to, and it definitely depends on your computer, but the audio buffer size is going to dramatically increase or decrease any latency or lag you are hearing in your signal. If I set this up to something like 15.3 milliseconds. It's gonna be very safe for my CPU, but you're gonna hear an obvious lag. So depending on your computer and what it can handle, uh, you're gonna to wanna to lower this. I find that 64 samples, 1.3 milliseconds is not noticeable for playing at all, and it seems to be pretty safe for my computer. I don't have any crashes or issues like that when I use it, so we're gonna stick with that. Now let's check out the different amps we have here. And again, the reason that I picked the Amp Hub as the audio sim for this video is just because I like the aesthetics of it. I like the way the amplifiers look. And you can see there's just a ton of really cool looking amplifiers in here. So let's load up this 5153. Another thing I need to mention while we're in here is you are gonna wanna bypass the cabinet. You do that by double clicking on it and it will go sort of opaque. You definitely don't want your cabinet emulation on if you're running through an actual guitar cabinet. So this is the 5153 at its stock settings. <laughs> The controls are pretty much the same as you would see them on the real amplifier. I mean, we're not going to do anything really dramatic to this. We're just going to just going to turn up maybe like that. And then we're going to throw a boost in front of this guy. We are going to go with Let's do the 66, which is basically a Fortin 33. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Pretty gnarly sounding tone, and you know, if you don't have access 
to a bunch of different amplifiers, but maybe you have some plugins that you really like and you wanna experiment with recording live guitars, this could be a really easy way to do that. Let's swap this out for something else here. Uh, let's go for this Framus Cobra, and I reviewed one of these on the channel, and I gotta be honest, I didn't really like it too much, but uh, I got some tips on how to dial it in, so we're gonna... We're gonna try that and see how it works out. Let's try that and see if we get a similar result to the real amp. <laughs> that sounds really good. Uh, it's missing a lot of low end though. Let's crank up the bass and the deep knobs. Sounds pretty good. Uh, let's go for something else though here. Man, what kind of tone do I want to try and dial in? Let's try the slow 100 here. We have it on overdrive. We're going to dial it preemptively something like that and then let's boost this with something else i don't want this fortin 33 in front of it um let's go with this earthquaker devices plumes pedal we're gonna actually increase the gain a little bit which is going to engage the clipping modes that are here and i really like this on clipping mode three and because of that i'm actually gonna turn down the overdrive on the amp i don't know why i turned it up let's see what that sounds like <laughs> You know what? Um, let's go with an amp that I actually own, and that is the Crater Dimed Amp. And I have used this amp a ton, and pretty much the way that I would normally set this up. Probably something like that. cool very similar to using the real Krankenstein that I have back there in my experience so uh, take from that what you will uh, let's do a little bit more dialing here all right I really like that as a rhythm tone a lot actually we have on tap compressor digital tremolo parametric EQ. you know what let's go with the space verb here <laughs> that's a pretty cool one. Oh, we can add some shimmer to it oh man that was really cool and let's add in some delay <laughs> So unfortunately with the STL amp hub, you can't really get that clean channel, like nice and super clean like you can with the real amp, but uh, we can turn down the volume knob a little bit there and that'll help us out.
So like you can see, if you have a computer that can run AmpSims reliably, then there's no reason you couldn't use it as your rig, assuming you have a power amp and a speaker that you would like to run it through. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.